Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the ranking member. Thank you to the witnesses for being here for this uh, really important subject. Um, it, it's fascinating to all of us, and I, and I think there's certainly broad agreement that we need to do more to help biomedical innovation and healthcare innovation. Um, there, there's a lot we can do. I, I do have concerns about the ARPA-H um, proposition, that it may be duplicative, uh, and that it doesn't address some of the problems with innovation and the core problems uh, with CMS, with the FDA. You know, I, I wonder if that valley of death is really lack of funding or problems with the FDA and, and CMS not, not agreeing to pay for a particular project or treatment. Um, for, for Dr. Miller, if, if ARPA-H will cover investment when the private sector fails, we have to ask the question, why is private sector not, not investing in a particular product? Okay, so why wouldn't they want to invest in a particular project? Thank you, Representative Crenshaw. I, I get proposals from biotech companies and device manufacturers probably every week, and I read them, and usually my answer is, no, this isn't gonna go anywhere, and it's not necessarily because it's not a good scientific idea, but because, one, there's usually not a payment policy framework for it. I mentioned the Medicaid drug rebate program earlier. That's a common barrier for these sort of curative um, dream-type therapies that we'd like to see that can cure rare diseases. I think other things are, like at the FDA, we don't have a pathway for software-driven medical devices, and so you're not gonna develop that product because there's no path to market. If we want to turn into the Borg, uh, which you know would be great. I could run faster. I wouldn't have to worry about getting a knee replacement eventually, and other things. Those products aren't there, and no one's going to create them because you invest hundreds of millions of dollars, years of time, untold thousands of human hours of labor, and then you don't get FDA clearance because the FDA says, "Oh, am I going to evaluate this as AI? Am I going to evaluate this as machine learning? Am I going to evaluate this as software as a medical device? Am I going to evaluate this as a traditional medical device? And should it go through all four offices before it gets cleared?" So I, I think a lot of these are regulatory barriers, and we have to address them. And maybe I'll move the question to Dr. Ling. You know, is there is there anything in these proposals that would that would change that? I mean, what assurances could ARPA H give to therapeutic developers that their product might be greenlit by by regulatory agencies? Well, that's a wonderful question, Congressman. Thank you for it. Part of it again comes from is that um, there needs to be innovation at all levels. CMS needs to innovate. FDA needs to innovate. CDC needs to innovate. NIH needs to innovate. Okay. Within these different groups to keep up with the 21st century, because that's where we are right now, facing 21st century problems. In fact, you are correct, across the enterprise, this needs to be done, but this is where ARPA-H could be very helpful. I, and I agree. Um, like, I, I think there's places for that, but it does seem like the, you know, we might be putting the, the horse before the cart here, or the cart before the horse. The horse does go before the cart. Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, it may, maybe, and help us paint a picture, Dr. Lang, of, of if, if ARPA-H was created right now, in your perfect vision, do you have any examples of some projects that it could immediately undertake? I mean, who out there, what, what startup out there right now is just waiting for investment but just can't get any? Thank you, Congressman. One project I think that would be very helpful to be illustrative is what I came back to before is imaging. So right now, in the 1920s, we came up with X-ray, great. In the 1960s, we came up with CT scan, great. In the 1980s, we came out with MRI, super duper. What has happened since then? Nothing. So an ARPA-H project would be, get me an imaging platform that would have performance metrics at least an order of magnitude better than MRI, boom. Make it so that it has to operate at room temperature. That drives cost down. Make it so that it is not using ionizing radiation, much as X-ray and CT do, so it doesn't hurt patients. What technologies can bring to bear that you can do this right now? And I'm a geek, all right? So, for example, quantum orbital resonance spectroscopy could be an example. What you want, and there are small groups doing it right now. They can't get the money to do it. Siemens doesn't want to do it. Why? Because they sell MRIs. Why in heaven's name would they do that? So it's a white space. It is a technological solution. Now, what, what would be the benefit of doing such a thing, you would ask, uh, uh, Congressman? Well, if you had an order of magnitude better performance, you could actually diagnose, diagnose cancer earlier 
and I don't mean just a cancer, I mean all cancers, then you now have the opportunity of treating cancers when they're stage one and stage two. We may not have to invent new drugs. We may actually improve health because we're able to do that. That's an example of building a capability. Now, you talked about the regulatory on that. You need to drag the FDA in right then and there as we start to it and say, look, this is coming. You need to come up with ways to regulate this. That's your job. But, they, but you can't bring it to them four years later after it's done and say, now you got to do it. You got to bring them on day one. That's the point I'm trying to make, is that that end-to-end -end solution, and ARPA-H would call that, as, as much as Dr. Yamamoto said, is you've got to bring these groups together now, early. You've got to bring the patients in, because they're not going to want to lie down this thing if they don't understand what the heck it is. So you've got to bring them in early, early, early. You've got to bring them in at the very outset, Congressman. That's, in fact, how DARPA does it. It doesn't tell the Marines you're going to have this new thingamajiggy. They bring them in right away and say, look, we're going to develop this thingamajiggy. You need to go how to figure out how to make it an then in, and, 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 um, um, and put it in to, the, uh, to the, your combat system and your tactics. So you don't do, you gotta do it from the beginning, Congressman. That's the how you do it. Right. I appreciate your answer and I've gone well over. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman.